Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I am with Zev Parat. He came to the Hero the Watchman conference all the way from Israel, and he's got a powerful testimony. If you guys don't know who he is, he is the founder of Messiah of Israel Ministries, a very powerful group uh, there. And I wanted to bring him on because he is in the front lines of what's happening there in Israel. So I guess for starters, tell everyone a little bit about who you are. So for those who don't know, uh, they're kind of aware, and then we'll get into some of the happenings out there. Oh, well, Shalom Lisa, an honor and a blessing to be here. Thank you, Shalom to you also. Um, I'm a, the founder of Messiah of Israel Ministries. Uh, we reach the lost sheep of Israel and all the nations with the gospel of Jesus Yeshua. We have uh, Messianic congregations all through the land of Israel, what you call like house groups. We now have 16 house groups all through Israel. And we just share the message of Yeshua every, everywhere. We're not ashamed of the gospel. And we're seeing massive amount of revival in Israel, which is something you're not gonna hear on the news because the news is always trying to report to you that there's not a lot of revival in Israel, there's not a lot of salvations in Israel, but it's exact opposite. God, because so our prayers are working. I know I try to pray for Israel every single day. Uh, tell me, what is the most prophetic thing that is happening in Israel right now, in your opinion? Well, we have the elections coming up with Benjamin Netanyahu. We have oh, the yeah. war going on in, uh, in Gaza, which is constant. We have the threat of uh, Hezbollah all the time in Israel, but I think the real war here is the spiritual warfare. What we're seeing uh, in the background is the elections coming up in Israel on April 9th, and I think that's the spiritual warfare. Just like they tried to take Trump out, they're trying to take Netanyahu out. Who's trying to take him out? Well, it's the deep state in Israel. They don't want the peace treaty. They don't want the land uh, not to be given away. So we have the leftists in Israel that are doing everything they can to try to take Netanyahu out. And that's why this uh, war here in Gaza right now, that so-called happened two weeks ago, and they said it was a mistake, if you remember the first missiles that were launched. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the, according to the news, oops, it was just an accident, right? So fake news is not something uh, from the United States. <laughs> it goes to Israel too. <laughs> it comes to Israel too as well. And the only reason that the Israeli government were willing to tolerate that lie was because that Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, they didn't want to go to war right now before the election. So they said, okay, you said it's a mistake, that's fine. If a so-called mistake happens again, we're not going to tolerate it. Well, two weeks later, what happened? Another so-called mistake. And Israel didn't tolerate it, but this time it backfired on them. Because this time the people of Israel are wanting to elect Benjamin Netanyahu right now for what he did right now against defending Israel before the elections, putting his reputation on the line, putting his, basically the whole elections on the line and saying, you know what, I'm putting everything aside. I don't care that the fact that they're trying to indict me, I don't care that they're trying to slander me. I don't care that this might affect the elections. I'm gonna defend the nation of Israel and I'm going out there to Gaza and do what needs to be done. And in the process, what's happening? There's a turnaround right now in Israel. 80% or 90% of Israelis right now are going to vote for Benjamin Netanyahu. So I could say that he is going to be, based on what's happening in Israel right now, the Prime Minister of Israel once again, April 9th. That'd be amazing. And I, I guess it's the same tensions that happened during our election year. It's like it like funnels through, it doesn't matter what country you're in. All craziness and chaos breaks out in the country right before the elections. Uh, and I'm in prayer every day for Israel. And so it's, it's, it's interesting to see the similarities between the country because ultimately I think Trump along with Netanyahu and, and some other leaders are atten attempting to stand against that global order, if you will, or, or the rising of the Antichrist kingdom. I mean, there's there's so much that centers around Israel right now, and there, the Jerusalem specifically, as God said, it would be a stumbling block to the world. Uh, and what you're describing is exactly that, especially with the, the fake news. Now, on that line of fake news, um, what are some of the things that they're saying as compared to what is actually happening? Like you described the missile missiles going on and, and those going off, and 100% I agree with you on that. Uh, but what are some other examples? Do you have any others that, that you can Well, they with? say that there's 30 missiles launched into Israel. There's over, over 150 missiles launched, if not even more. Wow. And the reason that the Israeli government is not reporting this is because their children and families and Holocaust survivors are traumatized by every time there's a missile in Israel. So they're saying, okay, if there is 150 missiles coming into Israel and only 30 are really doing damage, let's not report that there is 150, let's just say 30, and try to calm the situation down. 
but the situation is much worse. And this is also fake news because they're not informing uh, the, the people of Israel. Now, how do I know this? I have IDF uh, uh, information, IDF connections, because I was in the IDF army and I have a lot of connections in Israel. And therefore I have top rank officials in Israel that report this to me and I'm in contact with them. Also, I have government people in Israel. I can't mention any names, but on my mom's side, I have deep double uh, government connections in Israel. So I know these things and I'm not supposed to be saying these things here on, on your channel or any channel, but as believers in Jesus and Yeshua, we're supposed to be about truth, not about fake news. So I'm just reporting the way it is because it's important for the believers around the world to know how to pray for Israel. So the more information, true information you have about Israel, the more you're, you understand what, how to pray for Israel. And I think that's uh, the important thing of, uh, of bringing all these things out. Also, what else do I see prophetic is Jerusalem's at war. The world's at war. Jerusalem's at peace. The world's at peace. And we know that Jerusalem's not going to be at peace until Jesus Yeshua comes back. So it looks like we're not going to have real peace until that time. But we're seeing the all hell breaking loose on what's happening in the Middle East with Russia, with uh, Iran, with uh, trying to destroy Israel. Israel, the idea of just bombed uh, several uh, of the uh, uh, warehouses in Syria that belong to Iran right now targeting them. How do they know all this? Because they've got good intelligence inside. They know exactly where everything is. That's why the threat of Iran is not as, as big or not as, as uh, crucial as the world thinks it is because Israel knows exactly what's Iran, what Iran is doing. They know exactly where everything is. They're not doing anything about it because they don't think the threat is real yet. But whenever the threat gets near to Israel, like it did right now in Syria, then they go in there and they just demolish it, destroy it. And that's important to know. And we're getting close to that time where uh, where the nations, uh, the Ezekiel 38, I'm not setting any dates, but we're seeing, we're seeing the play out for Ezekiel 38 for sure. Yeah, I, I have to agree 100%. And I've, I've read that we, it's like we're inching more cl closer to the biblical wars that, that he talks about. And I think that's why, you know, sometimes, you know, as a Christian myself, we fail to, to keep up with what's happening in Israel. And I think it's actually critical, especially if you want to know where we're at pathetically think thinking. And, and that's why I, I value what you do and what you bring to the table in your ministry, because you're right there in the front lines, in the country, and you get to you know bring Jews to Christ. You get to bring Muslims to Christ, all kinds of people in the area in the midst of literal chaos. So, um, you know, just doing God's work and, and fighting that, that spiritual battle. So, uh, any closing thoughts that you want to leave with anybody? Well, first of all, it's because of the prayer. It's because of Yeshua, but it's because yeah. of the prayers of believers like you and uh, all the believers around the world that are praying for Israel that can enable us to do this. Because, look, it's ground zero. Jerusalem is ground zero today. It started in Jerusalem. It's going to end Jerusalem. It's all about Jerusalem. Yeshua is coming back to reign in Jerusalem. That's why the enemy, the Bible says, from the time of Moses, the Bible speaks about Amalek, which is an antichrist spirit. Mm -hmm. And God tells Moses, I will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. But he also says, I will wipe out the name of Amalek from under heaven. And we know that's the outcome, that's the victory. But until that time, there is spiritual warfare. The war that we're seeing, the physical war in Israel, it's all, it all has to do with, the, with, with spirit, it all has to do with the gospel. And uh, the war against Trump, and I know that Trump's been cleared right now, and it's the same war against Benjamin Netanyahu. It's the same spirit. That's why they're friends together. That's why they're working together. And I believe that God has positioned Donald Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu for this time that we're in right now. I believe that, strongly believe that. And that's why I believe that Trump is gonna stay in position and yeah. Netanyahu is gonna stay in position. Closing thoughts. I think that it's important that the believers around the world continue to stand with Israel, continue to pray with Israel, and continue to not to believe everything that you hear on the news because not everything is true. Unfortunately, even the one the things that are true are twisted around and it's important to get, you know, resources and understand the truth and and be in contact with believers in Israel and believers that are reporting real news like you are. Yes. <laughs> and, which is important and then we know how to pray. That's that's what it's all about. And that is so huge because and especially I mean one more going back to Trump and, and Netanyahu I mean that's a huge tie especially when President Trump he supports Israel and he wants to bring Jerusalem back as the capital of Israel these are amazing accomplishments and uh, and I'm just excited and as far as news is concerned I battle it on a daily basis but 
um, it seems like more and more they're starting to regulate my channel and now I'm not even recommended uh, on news feeds anymore or anything and it's just completely doing everything they can to decrease it and to suppress real news because bottom line they don't want people to know what's really going on and like you said I think we really need to to get to the heart of where we need to pray so uh, if people do you have any books or website if, if somebody wants to look into your ministry we have a new book right now that uh, Carl Gallops and I wrote together it's the rabbi the secret message and the identity of the Messiah I encourage believers to order that book on Amazon because it really sheds the light on how Jews are coming to faith in Yeshua, how the most venerated rabbi in the history of Israel left a note that Yeshua Jesus is the Messiah, how that note is shocking the Orthodox movement in Israel. You talk about the fake news in Israel, they're doing everything they can to say the note's a lie. My ministry, Messiah of Israel Ministries, is getting death threats almost on a weekly basis, telling us don't bring that book into Israel. Why are they scared of that book? Because that book has information in there Bible scripture uh, cover-ups they, they they eliminated their own Hebrew alphabet and it's in we have evidence of that in the book well that's a pretty good book I'm gonna be getting a duplicates of that one for me and my parents so, <laughs> so you can find it on my website Messiah of Israel Ministries dot com dot org or dot net or you can just go to Amazon or go to Skywatch TV it's there at Defender Publishers wherever books are sold yeah, so check it out. I'm going to leave all the information uh, in the description box below. So check it there and get these books because they're already starting to, well, ban certain books in New Zealand and uh, they're doing it in other countries. So there could be a limited time. So check it out now while we have the freedom. Anyhow, uh, thanks again for coming on the channel, Zev. I truly appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. And uh, let's continue to do what God called us to do. Work the harvest together. Amen. Each, each one in his own place. <laughs> I agree. And thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven. And that was Zeb Farat signing out. Just a quick shout out here and a reminder, don't forget to check out my partner at preparewithlisa.com. Right now they have amazing specials and up to 45% off. Uh, check it out and get prepared and make sure you have food storage on hand for everyday occurrences because you never know what tomorrow holds. So don't forget, hidewithlisa.com.